In this review of the week's news, houses get repaired, construction workers get safer, and volunteers get awards. This is CTV News Week in Review. I'm Grant Mangan. An army of contractors began repairing 14 houses in Aranui. They aim to get every house refurbished in seven days. From painters to carpet layers, contractors headed to 14 of Aranui's houses needing repair. The task, to get it completely finished in a week. Housing New Zealand conducted the Hampshire Street Repair Project, aiming to bring an army of contractors to tackle the renovations of the 14 houses head on. Last Sunday, workers were assisting residents to pack up their belongings and store them in secure containers in the front of their properties. Housing New Zealand's General Manager of the Canterbury Earthquake Recovery Programme, Paul Commons, says tenants are pleased to be getting the work done so quickly. Paul Commons says although the aim is within the week, in terms of quality, no shortcuts will be made. It's exciting to get the work done quickly um, for the contractors themselves and the tenants, but these things take as long as they need to because we don't want to take shortcuts, we don't want to hurt people, um, we need them fixed properly. Contractors are hard at work. For lots of the properties, a great deal of repairs needs to be done. With a looming deadline, the tradesmen are taking the opportunities to work long hours. Uh, there's, a lot of, um, there's a lot of repairs involving um, redecoration, repairing cracks, um, doors that don't open, windows that are broken and so forth. And there's also a lot of work around um, replacing four co coverings, um, new, new vents in the bathrooms, new vents in the kitchens and so forth. So it's a combination of earthquake repairs and also improving these houses. Most of the residents are staying with friends and family while the homes are being repaired. Paul Common says the lack of temporary accommodation available is a part of the push to work so quickly. The tenants of Hampshire Street are supportive of the project. Please, their homes are being improved. There's a tremendous amount of goodwill out in the community and people do like um, having their houses fixed. I mean, there is a bit of inconvenience and there's children to take to school and there's people that need to get to their work and so forth. So there is some inconvenience, but generally speaking, most people are more than appreciative of having their houses repaired and, and in some cases upgraded. Paul Commons says 95% of housing New Zealand properties in Christchurch were damaged in the earthquakes. To those in houses still waiting for answers, Paul Commons assures it won't be long. Stay patient, we're on our way and uh, we'll soon be at your door uh, looking to arrange a time and, and, and a date to start working on your house. Painters, carpenters, carver layers and more contractors working hard until the end of the week. Looking at the street, Paul Commons says you can see the hard miles being put in. I think it's really exciting to get the work done and see progress. And you can see in the streetscape around here today, there's a lot of work, there's a lot of vans, there's a lot of activity, and that's a good sign of progress from our point of view. Joel Batista, CTV News. In March, Christchurch became one of the world's most resilient cities. To ensure Christchurch continues to retain this title, the City Council has created a new role. He's been the man behind the Merrill's flooding task force. And now Mike Galuli has become Christchurch's first Chief Resilience Officer. Well, it was a fantastic opportunity for the city to uh, get on the world stage, uh, look at other cities and plan our resilience and what it means for our own community. So I'm really excited. As part of the role, Mr Galuli will be working closely with Mayor Leanne Dalzell, overseeing and implementing a resilience plan for the city. It's not really about me making the changes, it's really about facilitating and engaging and having the conversation uh, and, and bringing in the best of the world thinking here to Christchurch. Earlier this year Christchurch became involved in the Rockefeller Foundation's 100 Resilient Cities Network. $100 million effort to build urban resilience in cities, making people, communities and systems better prepared to withstand catastrophic events and bounce back quicker and stronger. Uh, you know, have we got systems that are adequate and fit for purpose, systems that can be scaled up and scaled down? Um, do we manage information well? And I, I have a view on that, um, and sometimes I don't think we do it that well. Um, do we communicate well? Uh, and do we build resilient infrastructure? Mr Galuli is no stranger when it comes to being a leader through tough times. His team are the ones behind this pumping system, aiding worse affected areas in the city when it floods as well as delivering the Land Drainage Recovery Program, a $10.6 million investigation that will inform and define the $179 million earthquake recovery program. 
we all come from a particular place and time, so and we're all shaped by those views. So I, I have uh, my views that have been shaped by the recent flooding events. Mr Galuli won't start in his new role until next month, helping Christchurch emerge as a stronger, resilient city. Emma Cropper, CTV News. The Labour Party has announced its latest Christchurch policy for the 2014 general election. More than three years on and the Port Hills are still filled with homes at risk of rockfall, landslide and cliff collapse. The Crown has already offered red zone buyouts, however a small band of property owners are determined to stay. Andrew is one of them. He was forced to move out following the February 2011 earthquake, but after the reversal of the Section 124 notice on his home, he moved back in April. And we're happy we came back. It's just definitely the best decision that we made. Labour's latest policy is aimed at owners like Andrew and his friends. Currently, the Christchurch City Council is planning to pay half the mitigation costs on homes for those who want to stay. After the September general election, Labour wants to pay the other half. They could put a bund, three metre high bund up on the community track and that would be more than sufficient to protect the houses here back down to the, reg the, the, the original GNS uh, risk factor which is 10 to the minus 4 which every other house is subject to. Instead of purchasing properties at risk from rockfall, Labour plans to install fencing and bunding to shield homes from falling boulders. So Labour's commitment is to put people first and to pay in partnership with the Christchurch City Council for area-wide rockfall protection. Those homes can be made safe. The families who have um, moved out will be offered an opportunity to come back to their home if they want. The Labour Party can't understand why a similar policy hasn't already been offered by the government. It's a very straightforward policy, it makes sense. I have no idea why central government has said no to it up till now. Technically it's feasible, all the documents say that. Financially it makes sense. Ruth Dyson says the policy won't save every house if the cost of protection works is too high, but she says in in some cases it could save money for the Crown and the Council. However, the Earthquake Recovery Minister says Labor's putting lives at risk with its policy. Well, if they think that taking a, a cheapskate way out and leaving people at a heightened, life, life, a high, heightened risk of, of uh, uh, you know, death or injury from rockfall is good policy, then we simply disagree. The Minister says the government took a long time to reach a decision on the Port Hills red zoning. They've already considered mitigation works, however the land damage is complicated. He says the fairest option was the voluntary offer. So I, th I think this is uh, a very cynical sort of policy um, that uh, you know, tr is trying to deny the science of the the, damage. the Minister says more than 8,000 red zone property owners have already settled with the Crown and in the grand scheme of things, Labor's new policy won't affect many people. But it will affect Andrew and his friends. Mitigation work isn't cheap and it won't be an overnight fix either. It could take months to get work started and work wouldn't start until after the election at the earliest. Marcus Gibbs, CTV News. Coming up... Workplace safety is the subject of a new video. Join me, Jude Kirk, every weekday as I share with you some of the best shopping in Canterbury. Avoid the monkeys when it comes to relocating. Trust A1 Movers, a family business since 1993 that guarantees a professional job every time. We carefully handle and wrap your valued items, ensuring they have a safe journey. Secure storage and insurance options are also available. A1 Movers, the careful, caring, moving company. Oi! My son's helped me greatly with my independence now that I've got more mobility. Mum, I've been looking into stand assist chairs from More Mobility. They recline back with a footrest, then when you want to get out of them they stand you up. You can even sleep on them. More Mobility can bring one out for a free trial. There's even electric beds too. What do you think? For more range and more expert advice see More Mobility, corner Clarence and Princess Streets off Blenheim Road. What a difference More Mobility makes. Missed a show or want to watch it again? CTV is fitting in with your lifestyle. Be in control with CTV On Demand. Check out our website and follow the links. ctv.co.nz 
The Hearst Auto Dismantler's premises has been sold. We apologise for any inconvenience. Potholes. To some, a simple hole in the ground, causing no harm and no concern. But don't let that fool you. Potholes are dangerous. Did you know potholes have been linked to numerous nasty falls and flat tires? So if you have a pothole situation on your property, don't panic. Call the Pothole Repair Company. They'll fix your potholes in a jiffy. So next time you see a pothole on your driveway or in your car park, call the Pothole Repair Company. Meet the people behind the biggest political stories and scandals of recent times and discover a different perspective. People in Politics, Monday afternoon at 1.30, CTV. Thousands of construction workers are helping with the Christchurch rebuild. The launch of a new video by WorkSafe New Zealand is raising health and safety awareness to keep workers out of harm's way. The Christchurch Rebuild, it's setting the standard for workplace safety across New Zealand. We're really creating a legacy we can be proud of. The Canterbury Rebuild Safety Charter was launched last year, collaborating rebuild leaders together to make sites safe. And this is a unique initiative, um, it's the first time that it's ever been done um, in New Zealand, in the world. Obviously everyone talks about the Olympics and what they achieved, but this is something really special. We're rebuilding a city, um, it's a masses of different programs and competing companies coming together to make sure people are safe. And now WorkSafe New Zealand has launched this video. We want you to become part of a great team and a legacy of safety we can all be proud of. Stress the importance of making sure no injuries happen on site. It's as important as quality, time and budget in terms of uh, an outcome. Uh, and I guess when you think about it, if we have a safe site, then everyone goes home safely. The charter is growing by the day, with over 20 signing on in the last week, building a safer place for local workers in Christchurch. Emma Cropper, CTV News. New research shows there are major differences in well-being between people who have settled their insurance claims and people who have not. Canterburians are tired, stressed and uncertain, three years on from the devastation of the February 22nd earthquake. New research reveals the differences in well-being with those who have settled insurance claims and those still waiting. 800 residents were surveyed across the region. Almost half say they still struggle with all that was lost in the earthquakes. So what people told us um, is, um, is that they, uh, they're tired. Um, uh, quite a lot of them are feeling, us, are feeling overwhelmed. Uh, there are some signs of hope. There are some signs that people's lives are returning to normal for some people, but for others, they're really still stuck in the middle of this huge, uh, difficult recovery period. International disaster research reveals the third year of recovery is the hardest. All right, manager Sue Turner believes for Canterbury, this is just the beginning. Lucy Daith, a public health specialist for the Canterbury District Health Board, says the city will not move on until every resident is recovered. Because the city has a kind of sense of uh, togetherness. We certainly had it immediately after the quakes, you know, we all were in this together. And I think there's a, a, a desire to keep that feeling, both for those who, who, um, who are still in the thick of it and those who, who are, are through it but want to, to stay in touch. Research showed those still waiting for insurance claims to be settled were struggling the hardest. 46% of waiting residents feel life is full of uncertainty, compared to 28% who had settled. The Canterbury District Health Board's Lucy Daith says delays in settling claims does impact the well-being of residents. 
We're concerned that this process of getting people through their repairs and, and, and a, a successful uh, closure of their claim, not, a, not rushing them through, um, but making sure that they get a, a resolution that really works for them, has got to be the priority for most people. 45% of waiting residents feel frustrated and stressed, while the number of settled residents remains high at 32%. While results show it definitely has an impact, even residents with settled insurance claims are feeling the stress of the impact of the earthquakes. The Canterbury Insurance Assistance Services is currently working with 80 claimants. Project facilitator Lorraine Guthrie says the stress and strain is evident in the clients they work with. Lorraine Guthrie says clients are overwhelmed by information gathered over the last few years. Guthrie says the residents are highly stressed with financial pressure and inadequate living conditions. Insurance just adds to the stress. Joel Batista, CTV News. The fight to save Centennial Pool has been lost as the demolition crews have moved in. In one last act of defiance, protesters are hanging their bathing suits on the fence around the site. Piece by piece, Christchurch's much-loved Centennial Pool is coming down. It's too late to save the building. The government has acquired it. The previous council signed it off and the current city council is powerless to stop the demolition. But that hasn't stopped Justine Otty from joining the fight to hang on to what's left. So tying togs on a fence seems a bit odd but it's a perhaps a way of, of celebrating the swimming that has happened here. It's a, it's a sad time for Christchurch again when um, arguably this is a savable public facility. Close to two dozen togs, speedos and bikinis line the fence. They first started arriving yesterday. Passers-by are strapping their bathers to the fence in one last act of defiance. You know, this is, this is a travesty. This is something that people in Christchurch will remember for longer than it takes to pull this building down. This protest is reminiscent of when Simone Pearson presented a deputation to the City Council about the pool wearing just a bikini for effect. After countless swims here, Justine's emotionally attached to the building. She can't handle the thought of the demolition. The original pool that was built oh, was targeted for demolition. It's like having your teeth pulled out. The demolition will make way for the Margaret Mayhe family playground. Christchurch Central Development Unit Director Warwick Isaacs says the demolition is a significant step for the playground and will allow the construction work to begin later this year. However, Justine Otty isn't so happy for the work to go ahead. I don't see how this is related to recovery of Christchurch. We have no, we have very few community swimming facilities and they're pulling down another one that was easily repairable for 1.8 million over the insurance money. The Centennial Pool sits inside Christchurch City Councillor Paul Lonsdale's ward. He understands the emotional attachment to the building. He says if the new council had tried to fight the decision, the Crown could have compulsorily acquired the land, paying less than the initial deal. It does sort of uh, deplete uh, the, the uh, availability of pools on that eastern, uh, southern eastern side of the city. Uh, however, we have got the, uh, or the you know, CCDU are replacing it with a metro sports facility, albeit a bit further away. He's all for the silent protest of togs. However, he won't be attaching his own togs to the fence anytime soon. Despite this, Justine hopes the wall of togs will continue to grow. Marcus Gibbs, CTV News. Still to come, awards were handed out to volunteers this week. I'm Chris Lynch. Join me for CTV's new current affairs show, Lynched, every Monday at 8.30 right here on CTV, where I talk to the decision makers and those responsible for running our city. Potholes. To some, a simple hole in the ground, causing no harm and no concern. But don't let that fool you. Potholes are dangerous. Did you know potholes have been linked to numerous nasty falls and flat tires? So if you have a pothole situation on your property, don't panic. Call the Pothole Repair Company. They'll fix your potholes in a jiffy. So next time you see a pothole on your driveway or in your car park, call the Pothole Repair Company. Welcome to Caltex Redwood. We're a family owned business proudly supporting our local community. We're open 24-7 for fuel and shop goods and we have an amazing team of people ready to help you. Save at least 6 cents per litre using AA Smart Fuel Cards. 
We also offer great value on our LPG bottle fills. We have a full workshop and Bridgestone tyre centre. Our mechanics and tyre technicians will get your car sorted. Caltex Redwood. We're just down from St Bede's on Main North Road. Caltex Redwood. What drives you? Our new companion package is a personalised service for those that need extra help and support. A cost-effective solution for someone who needs more than just a taxi driver. Our drivers are handpicked from our experienced team and specialise in providing the right support and companionship. Home safe every time with Blue Star Taxis. Action Removals, offering short or long-term storage facilities, full packing services, comprehensive rates, all fully insured and with six vehicle sizes to choose from. Earthquake repairs, action removals, pack, move, store and return your valuable possessions stress-free. Action Removals, a family business that has been operating in Christchurch for over 10 years. Action Removals, your one-stop removal service on time, every time. 0800 222 526. Meet the people behind the biggest political stories and scandals of recent times and discover a different perspective. People in Politics, Monday afternoon at 1.30, CTV. Four hundred volunteers of the Cancer Society have won the 2014 Ministry of Health Volunteer Awards. It's about celebrating the volunteers across Canterbury and the West Coast at the Health Volunteers Awards this year. Over 400 Cancer Society volunteers were commended for their dedication, commitment and hard work as the overall winners of the Ministry of Health Volunteers Awards. The Christchurch branch of the Cancer Society is thrilled with the award. The Cancer Society Canterbury Volunteer Manager, Diane Boyce, says she's so excited the hard work of the volunteers has been recognised. The award is just amazing. It recognises these rural group volunteers for the excellent service that they give to their communities. It's wonderful. Volunteers fill the gaps in the health system. Diane Boyce says the Cancer Society wouldn't be able to do the work they do without the volunteers. The volunteers um, help drive people to appointments for the Cancer Society, people with a cancer diagnosis. They may take meals around to help them when they're not feeling very well. Um, they may help with a little bit of childcare or um, you know, um, support uh, sitting, just having a chat sometimes, just a cup of tea or coffee. It's the first time an overall award has been chosen at the Health Awards. The 400 volunteers are from 19 of the different rural support groups, from Kaikoura to Hokitika. We are so excited about our volunteers being recognised in this way. I mean, it's, you know, there's people here that are in paid roles, but the volunteers just go that extra um, bit, and their gift of time is just immeasurable. The Cancer Society is funded purely off the yearly Daffodil Day, the Relay for Life event and donations. Diane Boyce says the volunteers are an integral part of helping the cancer-affected community. A good majority of the volunteers are retirees. Diane Boyce says giving of time to help another is so valuable. But we really value that gift of time that they give because also when you're retired you're also very busy. You're looking after grandchildren, you're playing golf, you're doing all sorts of bits and pieces so fitting in volunteering is, uh, is tough. But we have people that um, like to be busy all the time and um, yeah, fit in that in their week. Mm. National Volunteer Week runs this week, celebrating all the good work done in New Zealand communities. Encouraging more to get involved and make a difference, Diane Boyce says not only is volunteering rewarding, it changes lives. Knowing that you've made a difference in somebody's life is probably the most special thing that you can you know, feel. Anyone affected by cancer or simply looking for more information is asked to call the Cancer Society on 0800 Cancer. Joelle Batista, CTV News. Local university students are working together as part of a special project. Just as chemicals come together and react with one another, students at the Canterbury University have done the same. 
This Compare Contrast exhibition is a collaboration between science and fine arts. Chemistry students tasked with the job of communicating scientific concepts to fine arts students. From here, these creations were born. They explain to them a chemical process or a chemical phenomenon or a reaction and the artists then use that to um, feed into a work that they made in response to it. So not a direct illustration of the, chemi the chemical reaction but um, expanding and extrapolating the idea. Madeline Granger sculpted this design, showing a hybrid combination of plants and technology, coexisting together as a vision of the future. Using this copper wire in a fishbowl to show the plants slowly dying. Yeah, it's sort of like the idea of them coexisting, but they can't really because, um, because it's like suffocating the plant. The university exhibition gives chemistry and sculpture and design students a greater understanding of the comparing and contrasting aspects of their own disciplines. We don't normally like think about the terms that we use and we kind of think that the terms that normal people would like just use commonly. Postgraduate students curated the exhibition, finding the collaboration between the students worked well. I think um, this sort of thing's never not going to come without um, trials and tribulations because they've never worked together before, they've never done a project like this before, so I think um, from my uh, observations. I think it was really, it was really productive. The diverse range of students created 20 of these pieces of art sitting on display within the biology department. Emma Cropper, CTV News. Christchurch's Ted and Joy Darch are celebrating their 65th wedding anniversary this month. It's the year of 1948. Immigrants from the United Kingdom have just arrived in New Zealand off the ship the Rangitata. It's a story of boy meets girl. 21-year-old Joy and 28-year-old Ted met in Christchurch at a local dance. After a swing around the dance floor, the couple fell in love and were married a year later on Joy's 22nd birthday, the 25th of June, 1949. Although we were on the same ship, the Rangitata, uh, we didn't meet until we started going to the dances in Christchurch. 65 years on, the couple have found living happily together in Sprayden. How they met seems blurred. Ted recalls it a little differently. Did you tell the lady we met on the boat? We did meet on the boat, yes. I told the lady, but we didn't meet properly. I don't remember him on the boat, so I didn't tell you that. But <laughs> so you met on the boat? We, he spoke to me on the boat, but my mother told me. My mother told me to be careful. <laughs> I'm just being Irish funny. <laughs> no, he evidently spoke to me on the boat, but I don't remember at all. The couple have had over 60 years of laughter, adventure and fun, remembering back to the special day where they became Mr and Mrs Ted Darch. We were married at Durham Street Methodist by the Reverend Raymond Dudley, and um, we had a... a a small reception at the Mayfair, which I don't know whether it's still there or not, at the back of the cathedral. Honeymooning across the hill in Akaroa, Joy laughs and says the weather was horrible. Over the years, the Duchess have created a lifetime of memories together. If you could go back, would you change anything? Uh, no. But she's quite, you're quite, quite happy. Quite content. Reaching their 65th year of married life, the couple laugh looking back. The two are the best of friends. Yes, yes, not many downs. Naturally, we have ups and downs, both extremely fiery, but we seem to battle through it and don't have too much problem. Are you quite happy, she says? We haven't come to blows yet. No, no. <laughs> Creating a life together in an exciting new country and a beautiful family. I had three children. Um, five grandchildren and number eight grand great grandchild is just about is coming this year. So three. This year, Ted is now 94, and Joy will soon turn 87. On her combined birthday and wedding anniversary, Joy says the years have flown by. When we look back, really the last years have flown. You know, the first years we didn't take any notice. I don't. I don't think most people do. We had a lovely 50th, a lovely 60th, and when this one came along, 
um, it's I sort of sprung on us a bit. Congratulations to Mr and Mrs Darch. Joel Batista, CTV News. That's CTV News Week in Review. I'm Grant Mangan. Have a great weekend. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.